May 13th. Day before Mother's Day. Nick and I went out this morning. We left kind of late, like 9 o'clock. We left uh, Winnemac and went to the uh, Army Woods for the third time in three days. And uh, we found, uh, this looks like about 20 pounds, probably 25 pounds, and we were in the woods only three and a half hours. And we found all these runes. It was a great hunt. It was a hard hunt wet and muddy and everything else, and as you can see, they're still giants. These are giant mushrooms. That's my dad holding the two giants. For as long as I can remember, he's hunted morel mushrooms. It's a pastime I never took to, at least until now. Even if you've never heard of mushroom hunting, you'll enjoy meeting dad and his buddies, especially once the stories get going. Plus there's this business of hunting the Roonies, which only grow in the spring for a couple of weeks a year. The season can be extended if you're willing to travel, and travel my father has. 500 miles from Winnemac, Indiana, where he lives, all the way south to Memphis. Then as spring moves north, another 400 in the opposite direction. From north central Indiana, up through the length of Wisconsin, all the way across the upper peninsula of Michigan and the Mackinac Bridge before returning home to Winnemac. At 74 years old, my dad knows he might not be hunting mushrooms for much longer, and he's already lost some of his friends. Bob March is one of those friends. He and his wife Sharon were both a part of my dad's regular group. Sharon couldn't be with us, but she had her brother Jeff, surprise surprise, also a mushroom hunter, open up her basement so Casey Jones, my dad Martin Torgerson, and Vic Heater could reflect on over 50 years of hunting mushrooms. Whether due to climate change or just a quirk in the weather, the mushrooms came early, nearly three weeks so. Dad called me with urgency in his voice. You better come now, he said, if we're going to have a chance to find any. Two days later, I made the 742 mile drive from New York to Indiana. Sometimes I'm a lot more like my dad than I realize. We'll start you off in Bob and Sharon's basement, and then we'll move back and forth between stories of Hunt's past and a local hunt in nearby France Park just outside of Logansport. So here we go from Bob and Sharon's basement, The Mushroom Hunter. But I, I can remember back when we started getting together, we played it's golf good. together. I think somebody introduced me and went down there and played with Casey, then pretty soon they got involved with Mushroom. But Jerry Howe had a lot to do with our start. He, he and a couple of guys were going to Illinois, yeah. to the gravel pit, yeah. and Torg thought, I think, did he take you or not? Well, I made my mind one time, if they don't let us go, we're going to follow, follow them. Follow them over there. We're going to wait on the edge of town at 2 o'clock in the morning, and, we're, and when they go by, we're just going to follow them. And we got there somehow, but he took you. Well, he finally agreed yeah. to show us the way. And it was an out. I don't like to wear my boots on the way to the hunt mm -hmm. because something happened and you had to be taken to the hospital or something and I had to go to the hospital with my boots on. So I always <laughs> put my boots on when I get to the woods. Vic already hit, he'll already have his stuff on, be ready, he'll be ready to go. All right Vic, who'd you bring today? Okay, I brought Caleb, Jusinski and Gammy Kopka, my grandkids. We met, we were out here a week ago, so that we think we might find one, I don't know. So they were with you when you found the ones yeah. where you hid the, you put leaves over the little ones? Right, yeah. It now Caleb, Caleb, you don't like your jacket? Uh-uh. What, what kind of jacket would you wear if it was up to you? My Adidas jacket, the nice clothy one. Yeah, what's that supposed to do, you think, that jacket? This one, I don't know. Keep, Keep the, the thorns off. off of you. Yeah, so Vic, my jacket, I'm in trouble in this, right? Well. You probably be in trouble. This is my this is my not not make swishy noises while I'm filming oh, jacket. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Uh, it's so warm it, though. We it, need to be warm today. It's Cammy. Mm -hmm. Cammy, uh, are you a mushroom hunter? Yeah. Yeah. The, your grandpa didn't have to force you out here. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. Thanks for coming, guys. Oh, well, another reason I still hunt, of course, is because of Torg. But I like to take our grandkids, and we got 11 grandkids. And some of them are past the age of the, these guys. And we go into the woods and we keep alive the thrill of the mushroom hunting and uh, keep alive all the tales that I've gathered in the last 40 years with Torg and Casey and the guys. 
and uh, we have uh, many memories and it's kind of nice to share them with my grandkids because I want to keep that going forever. Tell me about this trail we're getting ready to walk up. Are you talking to me? Sure. Uh, well, we're going to be taking off right here. It's a nice trail. The only ones still able to hunt, uh, and it's a sad thing, with our older friends are Torg and me. And uh, with me being able to look for mushrooms with Torg is a blessing. It's, it's pretty daunting task to keep up with him because he's fast and he knows where the trees are, and if he doesn't, he still finds them. All our fellow hunters were uh, very good hunters and determined hunters, and all had great abilities to root out these uh, elusive <laughs> fungi, and uh, fungi, and people like Butch Reedabu, Jerry Howe, Casey Jones, Kenny Hattery, Bob and Sharon March, Doug Blastic, and of course, Martin Torgerson here, has uh, filled my memories with endless tales of the quest of the mushrooms. The elm is supposed to be slightly dead, not all the way dead. What's the theory on the slightly. livelihood of the... One with a gray streak in it, too, helps. It, How about it, that brown stuff? Brown, brown and white, that's a good one. It's got to almost, it's got to be dead. It's got to have some bark on it, though. Yeah. It can't be just a bony skeleton of a the tree. The first year they die. The first year they die. First year. That's when you want them. Yeah, that's when they have the bonanza, if they're the, going to the be big one. big bunches. I'm going to move I can tell you something, when I was a young kid, my Uncle Chant was, great Uncle Chant was about 70 years old and he used to use a stick and he'd find a mushroom and I couldn't find him and I'd, he'd put him in the weeds and I'd follow the stick down to where the mushroom were. That and that's the truth, I could, that's the only way I could find him. So and the, the, he the, and advice, the advice was just to look down the stick and that's where the mushrooms follow would be. Follow the sticks down and that's where they're at. Yep. And that's what I could do with these kids because they can't see them either. <laughs> that's not true, they can find them and I can't. I'm looking for another stick because you kids need to get a stick. What we're doing now is trying to find some trees. We're not really looking too much in the ground. Jimmy, you might want to try that out if you don't like the it. The bark's coming off of it. And it's a real close green bark, tight bark. But if you look up the top of it, it's dead up there. Look at, look at the branches. They're thin up towards the top. That's a nice elm tree, but there's no mushroom around it. Yeah, I've got a problem. I always follow Torg. And Torg, a couple years ago, said about seven years ago, he says, i got a good place to go hunting mushroom. And I said, where is it? Memphis, Tennessee, and I go to Arkansas two or three times a year, and that's a lot of driving. I get down close to St. Louis, there's a sign. Memphis, Tennessee, 428 miles. <laughs> and I'm a tour, I'm already tired, we go 400, he's 400 more miles, we'll be there. No, we go in this woods, and we find one or two pounds. Not very many. We can find more than that right at France Park. Yeah, I'm done with that trip. Yeah, he said, I'm done with that. Five years in a row, he still goes down there. I said, don't do it anymore. This year, Torg, I told you, Torg, don't go down to Southern Illinois. I get back from Arkansas just a couple weeks ago. Torg says, I've already been down there. I said, oh, don't go down there. Well, Vic, I read they find him in Maine, so you, that can be your next trip. Yeah. Oh, I they found find him in Maine? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Usually, around here, we'll drive, Torg and I, we'll drive down towards Logan, and just be looking. If you make the turn off 35 and go on to France Park, if you see nice green shrubs just now coming, yeah. you know, a little, not many lead, but some, if you see that where you can't see through there, and of course the lilacs are on, that means you got a good chance of finding them. We always do find yeah. them. Yeah. So, so, so the, one of these plants? May apples. All right. What are you the, saying about the may apples? Well, when they're up, the mushrooms are up. When they're up that size, that's a good sign too. Found a dead elm tree. That's one right here. I don't think that is, too. Oh, okay. Myself. Boy, it's close. It looks like one, but 
a, dead, a real dead elm tree always looks at like at the top it's got a, like a broom. Really? Did your grandpa ever say anything about that? Uh-uh. If you look at the top and you see, you see stems coming out like this, twigs and branches, right. looks like a big old broom. Really? Okay. And whenever Vic and I see that and we say, look at the broom at the top of that tree, that's a good tree. Right. But I, this does not have the right looking broom. Trying to find a tree, a certain tree, Bill. That's why we're kind of wandering around. There's a tree out here on the edge that's a pretty good tree. And we left a couple mushrooms last week. So that's what we're looking for right now. Things will get easier and simple here in a few minutes. Too hard to mark them in this place. Oh, it is. This is not a good place where you mark where they are and then try to find them later. Yeah. You know well, I'm finding that out. Yeah. Camera worry. <laughs> Do you remember the mushroom that we yeah. left here? Yeah. He did grow. Did he really? Yeah. yeah. And I he was, he was I, a, I remember he was a gray, and now he turned yellow. Oh, for pizza. That's a dandy. Remember how little tiny little gray that was? Yes. Yeah. So if Caleb can find those over at that one yeah. spot while we'll be in business. Way to go. Or, why aren't there more of them in here? I don't know. That's a mystery. There should be more mushrooms. That is, that's exciting right there. Caleb, where are you? Caleb? Yes, I said we're right here. Don't go any farther. Be careful. Don't go any farther. I don't want you to step. Not enough foliage on the ground. Need more weeds and grass and stuff. Yeah, man, something. Get that guy back there and put that ring back down there. Here's one here, a little horrible looking thing. Is it? Did I step on it? No. Oh. Where is he? <laughs> you don't want to take a picture yeah. of something we don't keep. Okay. Do hold you? It, hold it out closer. This is called a hattery. After Kenny it's Hattery. named after Kenny Hattery because Kenny Hattery would eat old mushrooms and his kids did too. So we said, well, those are Hatteries. What is Hattery? Hattery, Hattery would put his bib over us and say, oh, we're just farmers from Indiana. Got raining in Indiana, we thought we'd go mushroom hunting. Yeah. His John Deere hat on, and after that, the farmer was inviting us in for coffee. <laughs> Do you remember the first time we went to Richland Center? When we had a couple cars? And we had to buy. Well, we, some, of, some of us got lost, and we had to set that gas station until somebody came That's by. Right. But we went out in this field, Hattery's with us, driving that El Camino. Yeah. Torg and I, had, Casey, you're up here, finding these mushrooms. We're mad because they're old. They're big things like this, but they had age on them. And we're doing this. We're throwing them over our shoulder. It's like, I mean, it's unbelievable. This is an ugly mushroom. This yeah, is yeah. an ugly. This is hey, an ugly. Yeah. They're, they're that big. Yeah. And what's Kenny Hattery doing? Hattery is on his hands and knees picking hey, them up. Picking them up. We're throwing them down. <laughs> picking them up. Hey, then, then that's the more Casey and Tord came up with the name of Hattery, which is a horrible looking mushroom. Yeah. Okay. So what's the plan? We're going to spend 10 minutes in this little section of woods right here. We used to find a lot of mushrooms in there. Lately, it hadn't been very good, but Vic and Caleb went in there about a week ago and saw some decent looking trees. You say you found a couple of runies, didn't you? Well, it was last year. Oh, last year. Yeah, we didn't okay. go this year. Whatever. We forgot about it. He, he didn't, but I did. So we're going to go in there for 10 minutes, and then we're going to go on that along that ridge again, along the path, and circle that lake out in the middle of France Park. All right. No luck yet, Billy. Don't go any farther, okay? Where do we get up there? Grandpa! What? Calm down. Back up a little bit. Yeah, there is a sturgeon down there. I don't even want to see him. Well, I know it, but we're four or five <laughs> foot away. But he's only probably four foot long. I've seen him before. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> see, this tour don't like the water. Yeah, he's fishing in there. Water, water everywhere. Hey. Look at that, look at that bird. Yeah. 
There were always a few hazards we had to watch out for, the usual fallen trees we had to crawl over, or the really steep hill to climb or descend, or the hole you might step into. An occasional rattlesnake would shake a hello, and an occasional irate farmer would have to be avoided. Well, we were hunting in Illinois, that place that Jerry Howe took us. i got to get Jerry into this. Jerry's in there, he said, it started raining, and we were out there in the woods, and we hadn't taken off yet, and, and Jerry said, there's a farmer that don't want us in there. Jerry, that hell with that guy. So we're sitting, <laughs> we were up there in the hill looking down, and Jerry's in there smoking or sleeping, and this guy comes up, stops his truck, gets out, Ohio stares at him. Yeah, Ohio just laying there like that. And we thought, we, as soon as he took off, we went hunting. Later, we went on out there and we were finding him. <laughs> Torg, Torg said, I'm going to cross it. He hates water, by the way. There's kind of a, like a stream about 50, 20 foot wide, pretty deep. Torg gets out there and said, Watch this. He got on a log. There's no log. He walks three foot in the middle of it. He goes, The log snapped and he goes right into his neck, like this. Whoop. Then he gets out, he says, son, I'm done. Then he walks over here, and there's a thorn bush. He says, ah, then he goes, whoa, one grabbed him right on the foot. It, uh, this way, and he couldn't get wedged. his boot off. Got it wedged. Wedged, in there. Yeah. It was jabbed in his foot, and he couldn't get his shoe. In case you said, have you good. had enough yet, Torg? I said, let's leave him. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dad, how's it going? Kind of slow. we are still got hope, but uh, we haven't found very many mushrooms yet, but we still had fun. So the mushroom, mushrooms, the ones that you found that you hid, that hope is over. That's over. That's over. But it, we've got no, some up ahead, No, it's not though. completely over. We've got a couple of trees up ahead yet. So the spot where you maybe left 40 there, you didn't find that. Left 40 we, or we gone. didn't find any. All right. Cammy and Caleb failed me when I needed them. All right. Right. Yeah. Vic was also there. We've got a secondary oh, cameraman two. today. Secondary. Taking orders from his grandpa. Yep. All right. All right. Off you go. I did hear two orders. Don't go any further. Did you? <laughs> you did, that is your mantra for the day, I think. Yeah. Caleb, where are you? Remember, kids, last year yeah, where we found them? Is this the one? Yeah, this is the one we're here for. Oh, yeah, we Look at right here. Wait a minute. Stop right now. Come over here. I can see much of it. I don't even see Don't touch it. Oh, wow. You want us to uncover it, Bill? Yeah. Uh, sure. That guy could have picked 20 of it. Who found it? Good eye, Vic. Well, I'd have to see it. I agree. There's got to be more mushrooms in here. You know, it doesn't really look like that guy walked around in here because oh. nothing's really beaten down. So what's the point of climbing this hill? Because there's a certain tree up here he wants to check. A couple trees. Did I hear you say it's Bob's tree? Yeah, because Bob found it first. So why don't you stop a minute and tell me something about Bob March. Well, Bob was hunting in here one day. We were walking down that path. And Bob was a good hunter. He got off the path about 30 feet. All of a sudden he yelled, I'm in him. <laughs> So we went over and helped him pick them. And uh, for about five or six years straight, we've always found them in there. Ever since then, it's a little, it's a little rare. There still might be some there. Hey, that's the first time we ever looked around an elm tree. Or I ice love tree. hunting mushrooms. And, uh... and we were driving all around up here, and we get here, and Bob March says, Stop. We're in the May Apple, we're like this. We're in them. We're in them. They're everywhere. He says, don't you move. tell it. You tell don't him what move. it is. I said, I can't even take a step, Bob. Nope. Don't move. Don't move. He says, We're in them. We're certainly in them. He says, See that one? There's one. There's one. Oh, that's a biggie and fresh, too. <laughs> it was. And my guy says, There's another one. See that one right there? Oh, that's a dandy. That's a big one, Bob. We're really in them, aren't we, Bob? We're in them. We're in them. I said, Where's some more? He says, oh, I'm still looking. Mm -hmm. I'm still looking. Come to find that out. Was it. That was it. <laughs> Two of them. So how long ago was it that Bob died? Three About years three years ago. ago, wasn't it? Three years ago, just a couple days ago. In the month of April. Seems like he's still alive, but he isn't. That, 
That is the first mushroom I've ever found, I think. There it is. How in the world did you see? Oh, dandy. Holy cow. One of the best of the day. Big one. Yeah. Yeah. Now, why is that growing? Look at that tree. I thought it was one of the first trees in the town. It's uh, the opposite of decapitated. I guess it is decapitated. Yes, it is. Truncated, Bill. Truncated, huh? There you go. We're wrapping up here. What's the plan here? Why are we going this way? Well, we think there's some elm trees on the path back toward the car. So this is the way to go. Go down this hill. And we just walk along the path. And off the side of the path, there's three or four nice uh, elm trees. So that's why we're going this way. All right. And Here's there's the another chance we might find a tree we don't know about. Yeah, right. Cool. Okay. So here's to finding a couple more. Yeah. Lots of times. And then we take a forced march yeah. another mile and a half to, to another Then place. we want to go home, because years ago we didn't even stop in motel. Uh -uh. We drove up, hunted all day, During drove the all night, hunted all day, and then yeah. drove all night. <laughs> and the big thing is, we're all tired, and Tord wants to stop in every new woods on the way back. We, <laughs> we go like a cage and I open our eyes up and say, Let's go out here and look, hey, Torb. We, we said, Torb, you go look. I heard you guys whispering about me. Oh, hey, who? We had things like this. Torb going crazy. <laughs> what the hell is a guy up to now? He wants to stop at another tree? Yeah, buddy, he'd find him. We had good results coming back from Wabasha. Oh, <laughs> did oh we yeah. Know. We stopped right along the highway. Hey, I got to tell River Torb, I always say, let's quit on tire. I heard it. You guys. Boy, that's a nice one, isn't it, Nick? Got perfect shape yeah, all here. Oh, oh right. wow. You know, hey, what? that is far away from the tree, Vic. Look how far away you are. Oh, there's a tree right here. Caleb, Torg. Pick him, honey. Torg. Torgy. Look, take the dirt off of him. Torg. Vic, he won't listen to you. No, he won't. Torg, look here. I'm telling, teaching Cammy, you got to get more dirt <laughs> off than that. Hey, this is an ugly one. Might have to break off a little bit of the rub mushroom. Is that the one? Yeah. Break it off about right in there. There that's, you go. That's one of the other rules I know. Good plant. job. That is the best one. Oh, look at that. Look at those ants. Well, right. get the ants. Hold it up close to the camera, to the front Shake of the them lens. out. I can't see it. Push it up toward the lens more. Hey, Tor, give it to me. Right Caleb, right give me or Caleb, give me your water. What? I got to get oh. the ants off there, Bill. I see them. <laughs> Are they getting you? <laughs> that's what Casey was talking about. Put it all over your hand. You got any water? Liquid and left? That's okay. No, no, I'll do this. I'll get them. Okay, I'm gonna throw some water in there. I was thinking all that was mud. You got any ants on you, Cammy? No. There's three trees around here. Quit finding an ant tree. The good part of the trip was Sunday evening when we divided the mushrooms. We weighed them and everybody got an equal share or close to it. When you're dealing with grocery sacks full, what's the difference? When the amount was meager, it's one, two, three, and so on. Regardless of the amount, a good time was had by all. So how do we do today, Dad? I'd say about three quarters of a pound, maybe a pound. Nice fresh mushrooms. We were hoping to find a lot more, but we're pretty happy that we found these. And everybody contributed because everybody saw mushrooms and everybody picked them. Everyone in the group saw a mushroom and yeah. found one. So uh, things worked out well. Well done, everybody. Of course, Vic's worst story is the time he got bit by the Lyme disease tick. Mm -hmm. You got to tell him about that? Or? Yeah. We went to the woods. We asked permission. Like Kenny Hattery, being a farmer, got permission to go in there. Dairy farmer. <clears throat> yeah. And we've hunted there ever since. Last year was the first year, probably 10 years we haven't been there. But uh, we went in there and we've always been aware of ticks. And uh, after our hunt and everything, I was pretty good shape. I can remember my uh, son-in-law, John Bainey, I just got out of the shower and I was sitting there and I just sat there in my underwear and John walked by and he says, you got a target on your side back Bullseye. here. Bullseye. Yeah. And I kind of never look at my ass when I'm taking a shower. I can't get my head back here. Anyway. <laughs> You know, I never was aware of it, and it was a perfect circle, and it must have been about, I'm going to say, four inches. It was deep red in the middle of that thing. 
Ugly. You know, this is this is a couple days after we got home from mushroom hunting. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, didn't bother me any, so I went to bed that night. And I went ahead and got up to go to work after that. And I can remember going to work yeah, like three or four days in a row. One time I found myself working, and I fell right down in the middle just telling guys what I wanted to do. And there I am, passed out on the floor. So <clears throat> they took me. Uh, all right, I came back in and did the same problem. I had the same problem and fell out of bed again. They took me to the hospital. Uh, they didn't use the emergency room. Uh, I mean, the uh, ambulance was pretty expensive to do that. They hauled me out there, and I, two of my daughters are nurses too. But anyway, we go in there. There's a guy from South Bend. He's, he came in and had my shirt off. He looked right away and says, you're kind of lucky I, I'm here because you've been bitten by a tick. John said you got bit by a recluse spider. You know, I was worried about that. And I've seen what happens there. And I thought, well, that's pretty bad. <clears throat> anyway, he started giving me shots. I went through all kinds of things. But in the next six months, I was forced to quit working because I couldn't work anymore. It's a pretty it. controversial thing that uh, there were some scientists paid by insurance companies that to say there's no such thing as chronic Lyme disease. Yeah. So they could deny yeah. long-term antibiotic yeah, treatment. Uh, that, so. well, I never had any of that problem. Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. And it makes you wonder why we go mushroom hunting. After telling the stories yeah. about the ticks but the bad and part about this, you get the fever, even that, or having a TIA or whatever right. it was called. TIA. TIA. I want to go back next week. I quit about seven years ago going mushroom hunting, but I went once or twice just to go along and uh, just to ride the car. Yeah, drive the car. And Hear the stories. That, that's, it gets you in your blood. Well, you yeah. think about how many mushroom hunters were there at once, starting about seven. Yeah. And Torg and I are the only ones left that hunt. Yeah. And I'll tell you, every oh, year... Seven or eight guys. Yeah, every year, it gets tougher. Yeah. I told my <laughs> wife the other day, I said, I'm going because it might be my last hunt. Who knows? Well, just long as I long remember long. once we stopped to eat, to eat a sandwich about 7 o'clock in the morning. On the way there? Yeah. No, we just oh, had to have been hunt, hunting. I said, I'm 60 years old. I said, boy, oh boy, how much longer can I do this? Well, it turned out not very much longer because <laughs> I had to have heart surgery yeah. like the next year. I went Four to bypass or to something? find out, yeah. 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 But I came back stronger than ever. Yeah. Well, you did. Well, Torg had the same problem. He had that stint oh, yeah. that one year. I missed a whole season. Yeah. Yeah. They stuck a stint in there and said, get well, yeah. Torgerson, and don't go mushrooms. <laughs> so it was just me and Kenny Hattery would go, and we had a hell of a time finding the woods. Because you can always drive wherever these woods are. You know, we didn't even know how to get there. And you and Hattery were just lost souls. Yeah. <laughs> but we end up getting there. Yeah. Yeah. Bob. Mm. yeah. That's another thing. Our, a lot of our friends are really great hunters are now going, and it's pretty sad. Shared a lot of memories with them. Yeah. yeah. Vic drove his big Buick. It was just a fantastic trip. We saw some fabulous animals and some big bonanzas, and we just had a ball. It was one of the greatest trips we ever had. Sign it off, the mushroom hunter. Let me ask you a couple questions, Vic. Yeah? All right. How do you feel after 11 months of uh, high here on the opening day? Tired as hell. Get out of town just to be somewhere Oh, farmer to the side You better run the city with a book and a gun